What's up guys? This is another video about Ruby on Rails and a previous video I did a video about the asset pipeline. I wanted to get in more depth about Webpack and the new integration that is in within at least Rails version 5, 2 and up. I think by default you can have it uh, go ahead and install, but you can install it on versions of Rails as far back as 4.12 I believe. So by itself, Webpacker is its own gem. We can go ahead and check it out. Rails 6 on the horizon, very new, soon horizon, will ship with this by default, which you can flag to not install if you don't want to. So why Webpack, why all of these things? Um, think of it as a, a way to integrate modern JavaScript into your project almost effortlessly. Uh, setting up Webpack, if you've ever done that, is kind of a daunting task and this is going the Rails way, which is uh, non-configuration, so it's convention over configuration. Um, I've used Webpack in some of my builds, all those things, uh, in some previous tutorials and stuff like that to mostly hook into JavaScript, but also use the Tailwind CSS framework, which is a post-CSS plugin. So you need something more modern to actually drive that kind of CSS framework. And Webpack is the answer to that in this case. You could use different tools, of course, but for Rails, this makes more sense. So inside uh, initial 5.0 style project, you won't have Webpacker by default. So you actually have to install the gem and configure it to go ahead and get set up. Uh, if it's Rails 6 on the horizon, like I said, you won't need to do any of that. It will just install when you hit Rails new. So. For the sake of the video, I'm going to actually install it by hand at first, and then we'll install Rails 6 Gem, um, like the beta release. I think it's beta 3 right now. And then we'll just install an app, and, and I'll show you just by example. So uh, an existing app, you can go ahead and pass uh, on available r versions 5, 2, and up. You can go ahead and pass Webpack, and it will add it, at least initialize it to your basic app. And then we can run these things um, by default. So this will go ahead and fetch the latest Webpacker gem, and then we'll run a, a rake task that will install Webpacker and get yarn to go on to the stack as well. It creates a new folder called JavaScript in our directory. And that's its intention. Initially, it's you can compile just your JavaScript in this folder, but it can contain other things like CSS or images as well if you want to use that in your Webpack workflow. The asset pipeline is separate from this, but you can combine them in terms of compilation at when you launch the apps or deploy it, should I say. That assets pre-compile, if you've ever seen that task, that kind of ties into this, so you wouldn't even really need to make changes to your deploy process. At the beautiful thing of the Webpacker gem just kind of does that for you. So without further ado, let's kind of get stuff rolling and I'll give you a high level of what Webpacker is, how you could use it. Uh, the features, if you could see on the GitHub repo here, are pretty, pretty great. You can use front-end frameworks if you want. Um, compile your assets with Webpack instead of asset pipeline, which is kind of the old Rails way that still works and is still great. But it has very convention-driven techniques, and I think Webpack, the Webpacker gem, is kind of more common purpose, I guess you could say. So we'll get Babel out of the box, code splitting if you want that, uh, style sheets if you want that, images and fonts if you want that. Post CSS is great. I use that for Tailwind often. Um, and then I've got a bunch of other little things that we need too. So let's go ahead and just create a new app. I'm going to use, I think, Rails... 522, yeah, so to start, so we'll say Rails new, I'm in my sites directory, and I'll say Webpack, Webpack uh, 5, just to kind of give it that Rails 5 version. Um, I am going to pass Webpack as a flag here, and we'll see what happens. So the typical new Rails app goes and fetches all the gems we need. I think I installed a new version of Ruby recently, so this might take a little longer. It's gonna install some gems we definitely need for this version of Rails, so hang tight. So passing the Webpack flag actually initializes the Webpacker install, 
if you wanted to add that manually, you could certainly could. This essentially adds that Webpacker gem to your gem file, runs the bundle exec uh, Rails Webpacker install script, and then goes and fetches all the dependencies with yarn. So we can say Webpack 5, I think. Yeah, so we've got an app here. I'm gonna use uh, VS Code. I've kind of been on the code train lately. And we could just check out our gem file. I'm on the latest version of Ruby. Rails is 5.2.2 still, which I think is the basic um, non-beta release so far. And let's see, we've got Webpacker by default. So already that's in our project. We don't have to actually do anything. By default, you get ES6 compatible JavaScript in your, fi in your files. Um, it goes ahead and adds the include tag in your project too. So, uh, well, well, actually it does not. So these, this is the, this is the asset pipeline version of those webpack files. We'll still need to add it to our project and you can include it just like so. So we'll say JavaScript pack tag. The keyword here is pack. So webpack, uh, that's the difference in this plugin, this uh, gem over anything else. So, the main thing you'll need to focus on is any new JavaScript or CSS, you'll have the pack naming convention. And then you can include those things in your app just as you would any kind of Rails asset as well. So like asset pack path or asset pack path to CSS, something like that. Or you can even chunk your JavaScript too, which is kind of cool if you want to break things up at load time. Here we could just do like a console log, let's just do like const uh, webpacker. We'll just do, this isn't a very good example by any means, but I just wanted to do some ES6 and just run it. And we'll see on Rails server, this should compile. Oh, it's gotta type server, Rails server. And once this loads, we'll actually need to go render the page real quick. So we've got that. I actually need probably something to scaffold first. So let's just say Rails generate uh, post title. We need to say scaffold too. So scaffold post title string. We could just leave that off. Um, content is text. There we go. Just scaffold that. So we'll have that resource in our app. It creates a ton of stuff we don't need, but it is kind of useful in the sense of just getting some stuff rolling. You notice it doesn't add anything to the JavaScript directory by default though. I predict that might change later as new versions of Rails come out. So we get this coffee script file instead, which is per controller, which isn't really what I want, but we can go ahead and just roll with it for now. So we'll save that down. I need to change my routes to post. Let's go to find that. Where are we at? Config routes, resources, posts, route to post index. And sometimes you need to restart the server, but I think I'll just run the server. Boot that up. If we go to the index, it should update. Uh, we have to migrate first. So Rails TV migrate. One more boot after that rolls in. Reload. And if you pay attention to this bit here, you'll see it compiling, which is the whole beautiful thing that happens automatically when you install that gem. So you don't even have to really run like a, a reload script or anything though you could if you wanted. So to find that you can go into, I'll just quit this and go into, you'll have a bin directory in your app. Inside it is actually a rake task or a task that will run webpack dev server or webpack to compile your assets down. Dev server is kind of a live hot, relo hot reloading take on it. So bin webpack dev server. We'll just sit there and run that. And we'll listen to 3035. Looks like I have an error. 
Um, what am I doing? Const. I think I spelt it wrong. Oh, duh. You guys are probably screaming. Why that's even capitalized, I don't even know. But let's go and take that down. Uh, you save and that stuff should render again. So compiled uh, successfully now. So that's all on the fly. That's pretty sweet. So we'll go ahead and say Rails server once more. We'll get it compiled and then check our console. We should be able to see that little welcome message. So this creates maps, it creates a manifest, it creates compiled assets with um, actually fingerprints on them. So it's, it's just kind of a cool cached way of rendering your assets in your, in your app um, on top of say the asset pipeline if you want to use it. So there we go. We see the console.log. I can change that to and Andy, save it and it should update just after a little refresh there. There we go. Pretty cool stuff. So nothing too crazy, but just think of the options here. If you want to say install view or react in your app, you totally, totally could. Um, it comes with ports of that. You can install it from the command line, just like you would anything else, either from the start or just after the fact. So you can run like say view or well, no exact install angular. Let's try react just for grins. So I'll say, I'll copy that, kill the server, run this script. It'll go fetch dependencies, typically with yarn. Add some JSX stuff to our dependency packs. And we are in. So I'll go ahead and serve that up. Chloe. Let's go check out our repo now, or our actual project, and we get some React code. So we got David here, maybe I'll change that to Andy just cause. We get hello.name, React, and then we'll get props from that. So let's restart. Compile that, cause React is huge. And we need to actually include Hello React in our app. So let's just do that for grins as well. So JavaScript pack tag, Hello React. Oops, React. Resave it. There we go. Hello React. Should be saying Andy though. Why is that? Oh, okay. Name. Can change that. If there's none there, I think it'll go to Andy. Or not just do hello there we go yeah so there we go simple stuff kind of complicated setup um, if you wanted to really extend this and go crazy with webpack you totally could there is configuration files in your app uh, by convention of webpack you can include plugins if you need more uh, node-based stuff you can modify different um, webpack dev server settings here uh, include different assets, say you include fonts or something, or images, different type of extensions you want to compile on save or serving, you could totally go ahead and do that. So a few things else were added that were just more, more or less configuration based stuff that you don't necessarily need to worry about, but it's just stuff that you could modify if you want to later down the line. Uh, there should be a post CSS file in here too now, and Babel config if you want to update those. So we we use Babel in all environments, and inside that, you can kind of change the presets you want to use. There's a de the default one, I think, the preset environment. And since we're using React, this gets appended when you install that uh, and update it. And typically, I'll include like Tailwind here because it's a post CSS, so you'd require it and in install it with Yarn, require it and then require the plugin itself. So then you could use Tailwind, which would actually live in the JavaScript directory in that case, which I've done in the past. Uh, my course will feature that too. So if you're interested in taking that, you'll see that happen and how it's installed and configured. Uh, so, okay, 5.2.2 version of Rails. Maybe I'll install Rails 6 right now. So we can say, uh, let's see, I had, old school we could see a pre-release all the pre-release versions 
uh, by passing this line. So gym list rails dash dash remote dash dash pre-release dash e. You get kind of a remote gem repository of each version of rails that's in the wild, which is pretty impressive. There's a lot uh, all the way back to 238, which is nuts. Uh, but now we're on beta three of six. And pretty soon, I'm guessing maybe in a month or two, Rails 6 will come out and we'll have a lot of cool new stuff. Webpacker being the default new JavaScript compiler. So let me, let me install Rails and you can pass just pre-release if you don't release, like if I can spell release. So this should install the beta version. Yeah, beta three, the latest beta version comes in with that. And then I'll try to go ahead and create a new Rails app based around that after this installs. Cool, so we can say Rails version. So this will say, since we're in this project, There we go. So outside of the scope of your project, you can do Rails version and get that latest gem. Uh, so let's create a new one. It's Rails new. Um, let's see, Webpack 6. And I don't have to pass anything here. So let's just go ahead and create that. You'll notice Yarn and everything runs by default. Webpacker just right there. Uh, with Rails 6, we get a few new things. Um, there's a there's a blog post about it, and the repo is is open source, so you can check it out. But it's essentially um, adding action text, action mailbox uh, stuff. I'll probably cover in the future. It's nothing too crazy, but there is some general improvements. I definitely like um, like being able to switch to a type of database you want on the fly instead of having to do it manually. Or uh, what's another one? Parallel testing, which is pretty neat. It's better performance in the sense. So let's go ahead and go into that file with pack six. And I'll just open this in code too. And realistically, this is just kind of what we had already. So we've got our channels, which I didn't really need channels there, but you notice they live there now instead of in the assets directory. So action cable comes by default in this bit and uh, JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript is the new default too, so you don't see any CoffeeScript or JavaScript in this directory, which is the asset pipeline, old school approach. So now everything lives in the just JavaScript directory, our pack tags here by default, uh, it'll look like this too. And then in our view, you'll see it's just updated to include that pack tag by default too, so we don't even have to worry about getting rid of old scripts that were already in our app in the asset pipeline. Chances are you're upgrading your app though, so you might have to do some work just to make things sync up correctly. But all in all, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, Webpacker is a great tool. I re really recommend it on um, just getting your JavaScript down and in order. Uh, you can write really modern stuff and get away with it, so that's the perk of using it uh, to me. But I also use Tailwind quite a bit too, so I really enjoy that. It, it, it quaint can't quite live with the asset pipeline. Uh, so instead we serve it with this uh, using post CSS and JavaScript. So hopefully that was helpful. I know this isn't a build by any means of using something with JavaScript in this uh, video, but installing Webpack is pretty trivial. So you could install it to your project today. I think excluding projects before 4.12 or something like that. Um, so you should be able to go ahead and install it manually if you want. You just add this gem to your gem file, run this installation, especially if you're before f version 5, you'd run Rake instead of Rails. And you you would be off to the races. So definitely check out the repo. Uh, if you have any questions about Webpack or anything, um, let me know. Webpack in itself, honestly, I'm not very great at configuring an actual Webpack JavaScript config, uh, but using this gem makes life so much easier. So definitely check it out. All right, guys. Peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. 
visit hellorails.io for more information.